exercise 6A5. Learning objective 6 and learning objective 9. Let's begin here. Equivalent units, assigning costs. Kroll & Company uses the FIFO method in its process costing system. The following data for the most recent month of operations in one of the company's processing departments. And we're given a bunch of information. Units in beginning inventory, units started in production, units in ending inventory, and units transferred. All right. We're also given percentage completion of beginning inventory and percentage completion of ending inventory for two cost categories, materials and conversion. The cost of beginning inventory, according to the company's costing system, was 7886, 7886, of which 4897 was for materials and the remainder was for conversion cost. Costs added during the month amounted to 181,652. And the cost per equivalent unit for the month were as follows. So we've got a lot of information. We've got our cost per equivalent unit. So in terms of the production schedule, that's the ending line of part two. Costs to be accounted for are costs per equivalent unit. We've already got that. So we've got a lot of information. What's being asked of us here? Number one, compute the total cost per equivalent unit for the month. Well, that's easy enough. We don't have to do anything for that. The whole cost, the total cost per equivalent unit, is the cost per equivalent unit of each of the cost categories. So we're told that we have a materials cost per unit of $18.20 and a conversion cost per unit of $23.25. So if we add those two together, we get $41.45. There's number one. It was that easy, right? Let's move on to number two. Compute the equivalent units of material and of conversion costs in the ending inventory. And now remember, with ending inventory, since we're trying to match costs for the month with where it was spent, whatever's in the ending inventory, we must account for what was completed because the cost during the course of that month, some of those costs went to finish, went to start some units that were not finished. So let's look at our work in process end count. We'll start there. And our end count was 300. And we were told that of this 300 was 80% complete uh, with respect to WRT materials. 80% complete with respect to materials. And we're told that it was 40% complete with respect to conversion costs. So materials and conversion costs. Well, we have 300 in the end count. If they're 80% complete with respect to materials, uh, that is an equivalent unit of 240 units. And if they're 40% complete with conversion costs, that would create equivalent units of 40% of 300 is 120. So 240 equivalent units with respect to materials, 120 equivalent units with respect to conversion costs. There's number two. We're just knocking these off, aren't we? Number three, compute the equivalent units of material and of conversion costs that were required to complete the beginning inventory. Well, we would do the same thing here. We would do work in process, uh, a beginning count. And our beginning count is 400. Now, of this 400, we're told, as far as materials are concerned, that we are 70% complete which means we are 30% incomplete with respect to materials. And for the conversion cost, we're told that we are 30% complete as of the end of last month. So our beginning inventory must be 70% incomplete with respect to conversion costs. So 30% of 40 is 120 equivalent units and 70 percent of 40 is 280 equivalent units. So how do we interpret these two and why are they different? Why do we use completed and incomplete? Because we have costs incurred during the course of the month. Costs incurred during the course of the month must be for two things, must be only for one thing, all the work done that month. So if we start the month with some partially completed units 
We don't have to pay to get them partially complete. We have to pay to get them completed. So we have to figure out what the equivalent units are for the incomplete part. What we end the month with, we've spent money in getting them partially complete, so we're only concerned with what is the equivalent units of the completed units. And that's the rationale behind those two. Let's move on to the fourth question here. Determine the number of units started and completed during the month. Okay, well, that's easy enough. Let's just look at our units transferred. Well, we start with your units transferred. How many units did we transfer? We transferred 4,400. Well, of those 4,400, the work in process at the beginning of the month would have been the first units to be shipped because they would be the first units to be complete. You can't butt into line here. You can't just take the stuff off the line and start new ones. Whatever's on the line gets finished first. Our beginning count was 400. So if 4,400 units were transferred, and we subtract our beginning count of 400, because they're the first ones to go, that means another 4,000 units must have been started and completed. I didn't just say started. Started and completed during the month. So 4,000 units, uh, uh, units were started and completed. That's an and, not an or. Now if we say how many units were started or completed, that's a different question. This is and, right? Number five, the final question that we get to. What does it ask us here? Determine the costs of ending inventory and units transferred out. Well, that's a cost reconciliation. That's part three of a production schedule. So we're going to do a cost reconciliation. And we do that by starting with units. Let's deal with the units that were transferred first. And what units were transferred? Well, our work in process, beginning balance was transferred. And our beginning balance, we're told, was 7,886. Well, we're at it. Let's put our two, uh, cost, uh, our two cost categories here. We have materials. And we have conversion. Because we're going to have to figure out some things here, right? So there's our beginning balance transferred. Well, we had to spend money on raw materials to get this complete, and we had to spend money on conversion to get this complete, because this 7886 represents the completed portion. Well, what the incomplete portion, remember up here, this is our incomplete portion. This is our beginning count. So we have to use these two numbers here. Materials, we incurred 120 equivalent units of materials and 280 equivalent units of conversion. We're also told that 1820 is our cost per material equivalent unit and 2325 is our cost per conversion. So we'll just write that down here so that we don't forget 1820 and this is 2325 and our whole cost is 4145. There we go. So 120 times eighteen dollars and twenty cents gives us 2184. 280 times 2325 will give us 6510. Total these up, we get 16,580. This is our total cost from our beginning inventory. Now we're going to move on to our units started, units started, and completed. How many units were started and completed? Well, we're told right here, units started and completed, 4,000. So we have 4,000 with respect to material, 4,000 with respect to conversion. But since it's 100% done, we can multiply 4,000 by whole price, 4145. And we get $165,380. So we total these two numbers, we get 182,380. 182,380. This is total cost. of units transferred. There we go. Now all we have to do is figure out our work in process ending balance. And I'm running out of room here. Work in process ending balance. And we're told that we have an ending count of 300. But we have 240 complete with respect to materials. So we can put 240 here. 
And we have 120 complete with respect to conversion. So we could put 120 here. And I'm just going to put one number down here. So 240 times the 1820 will give us 4368. And 120 times 2325 will give us 2790, 2790. So the value of our ending inventory is 7158. 7158. So if we take our 182 and we take our 7158 and we add them together, I'm going to have to draw another line here. Our total costs uh, in our cost reconciliation, the total costs that we're accounting for are 189,538. Now, how do we know that that's right? Well, we can check that. Let's do a quick check on that one, uh, shall we? So we have a total of 189,000. $538 in total costs. But let's go up through the through uh, through the cost here. For the work in process ending balance, these were incurred during the month. For the units started and completed, these were incurred during the month. To finish the beginning balance, the, the work in process at the beginning, we have these two cost categories here. These were incurred during the month, but this 7886 was not incurred during the month. So if we take off 7886, we get to 181,652. Now, in the question, it says the costs added during the month amounted to 181,652. So we know we've done it right because this number minus the costs brought in should equal the costs incurred during the month. And this 181,652, if we had done the, the, the full production schedule, the, um, the part two costs to be accounted for were only the costs incurred during the month would have been 181,652 plus the beginning balance. So we would have balanced, right? That's the important thing. The, um, the purpose behind this question uh, was to see if you could calculate some of these, do some of these calculations and get to some of these answers without the need to do a full production report. In other words, could you pick out the information you need as if you had done the production report without doing it? Can you use it, in other words? So that's, uh, that's what this, uh, this whole exercise was about.